good afternoon, good evening, good morning, handy viewers such as you are, and welcome to this, the very first faster flip-flopping phone. Now, if you've not seen on a Friday night, I do a stream called uh, Friday Night Flip-Flopping Phone. I'll see if you can spot the theme and titling there, uh, in which I get friends from all around the world to come and play some Malifaux with me at what is half past five in the morning for me here in sunny Adelaide. Now, what I thought I'd do for this is just to take out all the decision-making comp points, all the conversations, all the umming and ahhing, the rules lookups, and all the dicking about with chat, and condense it down into its purest form, just a very quick game of Malifaux. I'm, whilst we were doing the Friday Night Flip Flopping Foe every week, this is something I'll do maybe once every month or so, depending on how it goes. So, without further ado, I'll cut it straight back to the live stream, and we'll take out all the nonsense. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, handy viewers, such as you are. As the aggressor, I get to decide whether or not I'm stoning first, uh, which I shall do. Flippy for initiative? I have a five of rounds. You have a well, ten of rounds. Right. What would you like to do? I wouldn't go to cheat, but I assume not. I am not going to cheat, no. I'm going to let you go first. You're going to let me go first. How very kind. I think I'll start off with the archivist. Place a web marker. Uh, with dust and cobwebs within eight inches of it. Then going to declare I'm going to cast Font of Knowledge on Nexus. And before I go ahead with the flip, I'm going to use Siphon Power to do the Berserker Husk one point of damage. Um, to add a suit of any choice uh, I like to the pool, I'm going to choose Tomes. So I'm going to cast um, Font of Knowledge on Nexus. It's a stat 6 versus willpower with no TN number, so that 6 is more than sufficient for it to go off. The upshot of this is that Nexus can now, until the end of the, of, of the turn, add tomes to anything that she does. I am not going to declare the impatience trick, and then I'm just going to go for a little walk. Cool. Over to you. The Banjanista, which gets me a 2-inch push on my entire crew. Friendly model of Impulse 4. There is four inches. Oh, that is all of them. Uh, the Banjanista is then going to have a little jog. Focus, I guess. Right, lovely. I'm going to activate the Berserker Husk, who, because he's activating within three inches of Meredith Stanley, I'm going to heal one. I am going to use Creep Along. I need a five for this to go off. That is a five. And I can make a move action directly towards a friendly. I'm then going to do the rest of my movement to move towards that strategy marker and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold Cranky next. He's just going to um, basically double move. I think I'll go with Kavatica next. So I'm going to cast Creep Along, pointing at the Shambling Nest on the halfway line. I need a five. That is a four. So I will cheat in this seven. And then I can just move twice and go one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you, It is. Uh, Georgie and Olaf time now are going to take the Who Runs Gremlin Town ability. <laughs> it pleases me greatly. And a five? That's awesome. There is stupid, sexy, stupid, shameless. Stupid, sexy, shameless. Uh, right. So, and uh, it's worth noting that Summer shouldn't be able to see me. I may have slightly whiffed the positioning there. Uh, they were positioned funny. And then I moved them. I think he can see him. He can, because I cocked up the positioning. Right, wonderful. <laughs> so I'll take two damage, but I do get to put focus plus one on all of the friendly minions within Oof. three. So that should be focus on the crier. I think that's worth on it. On the banjanista, on the skeeter, and two damage, which is suboptimal. But never mind. Right. Good. A little trot down to here. Mm hmm. Clip the forest so I get cover. And also so line of sight, it's not blocking for me. And then I'm going to shoot you with a gun. You're going to shoot a berserker husk. On defense. <laughs> I got a 15. I have, remarkably, I have a 14. Please take two damage. I will also move four inches towards you. And I'm going to bonk into the strategy market at that point. I am going to acti okay. activate the night silk creeper. Uh, so the beginning of its activation, I'm going to use Seize Prey and place into base-to-base -base contact with a web marker within 12 inches. Bonk. Um, I'm then going to use Create Web to drop a 50 millimeter destructible severe web marker anywhere within range. You don't even have to flip for this. And I'm going to focus. And that'll do me, I think. Yep, over to you. Yeah, this skeeter over here. So I'm just going to do two moves to put me... Oh, I think that, yeah, there. Skeeter is done. Uh, Nexus is going to use um, Omnipresent Influence to draw line of sight through the Night Silk Creeper. Sorry, through the Archivist. And I'm going to cast Exo Skeletal Connection, targeting 
the spell eater. So I need a six for this to go off. That is a Tuco, it goes off. So I am going to drop a 50 millimeter web marker into base contact with the target like that. I will then place the target into base to base contact with the model through through who which I drew line of sight like that. Um, I, I have a tome on everything I do, so I will declare the surge trigger and draw a card. I'm just going to place a red marker on the archivist because I can only draw a line of sight. I can only do this once per turn through each model. Uh, okay. I'm then going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to use the spell eater to target the night silk creeper. That is a one. Uh, I'm going to cheat in this nine. So I will place a marker in base to base contact with the night silk creeper. And then move the spell eater into base to base contact with the model that I drew. Can markers on. overlap? I didn't think they could. I think they can, but for the sake of ease, I'll just do that. I am now going to use the spell eater and I'm going to cast uh, Citizens of Malifaux. I am aiming for, th I need to make use of three web markers. Um, you might want to place the spell eater a little yeah, bit differently I'm then. Going to, I'm going to do that. So I need an 11 for this to go off. Oh, there we go. So I will replace each of the web markers with a eyes and ears. And I have one more AP remaining. Controversially, I'm just going to go for a little jog. Nexus, done. Aggressive buzz. There is some aggressive buzz. End of skating. I will go with Dr. Meredith Stanley, um, who at the beginning of a card will use the very curiously named A Fungus Among Us. And I will choose a web marker within four and a um, eyes and ears within four to replace with a berserker husk. I'm going to go for a walk. I will discard a card. There is a two to move Nexus. Uh, and then I'm just going to go for a, a little jog. It's going to be Lenny time. So he's going to have a little jog down to here. Random bout of brilliance. Bloop. It's a ram, which means I heal one, two, three. Lenny focuses? I think he can focus. Well, with my mighty move of three, I'm not sure a shambling nest can get to a skeeter, but he's going to give it a go. So I'm just going to go to there. Bop. So my annoyance totem is now being tied up by your annoyance totem. That is entirely correct. <laughs> oh, focus. Why not? Oh, the rest of getting political here. We have a fight between a bloodsucker and an absolute shambles, which I believe is the Tory party <laughs> conference. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's Prime Minister's question time. Poppy Boy is going to move down to there. He's going to use a leap, which needs a three. And then Hoppy Boy is going to place within six, which will put him there. And then he's going to have another little scampery jog up here. Hoppy Boy out. I'm going to activate my shambling nest up at the top. Go for a walk. Cool. Done. The Gremlin Crier is going to, using Bully... Uh, doing a bay targeting the Banjanista mm -hmm. to get a built-in mask there. I need a nine. That's a four. A nine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to buy a two card that off the top. Hoppa! Oh, yeah! <laughs> uh, the Banjanista is just going to have a little jaunty jog down here. Uh, AP2 is going to be a little jog of their own down to here. You should have one thing left. Oh, uh, yeah, I've got the spell eater. So I think realistically I'm going to focus and wake to get out of this cuddle party next turn. I box myself in with my summons because of course they come in having moved, so it's not like I just walk them off. So Summer is going to do some things. The first thing he's going to do is have a little jog. Right, it's going to be extended family now. Yeah, I'm going to summon a good old boy in a bayou gremlin. So I need a 19, which means I need the red joker. Ha! That's not the black joker. But it's, neither it is the red joker. This. He is. There we go. I think I want to move to here, so I'm clipping the um, forest. Now I'm going to shoot you! My boomer says, so I get a 13. I am currently on a 14. Uh, I'm going to join you on a 14. Uh, I think I will go to 15. I don't want to be shot. <laughs> uh, that's summer done. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I have one AP with my good old boy. I'll have a little jog. So we're going to jog over to here. That is me. Done. So after every other model has activated... You get a second shenanigan turn. Let's target uh, the Night Silk Creeper. Uh, I need a four for this to go off. Hello, Molly. Um, the general action that I will be taking is just a walk. 
Um, I'm then going to target the Spell Eater. Again, I need a four. That's the Red Joker. Um, the Spell yeah, Eater. I'll do it. The Spell Eater's movement is five, and I'm going to park the Spell Eater just behind the Night Silk Creeper. I have a Dreamer. I think I'm going to activate the Night Silk Creeper. I'm going to make a web marker. I'm going to drop it there. I'm going to scurry in this direction. Okay. Job done. So I'm going to go with the Bio Gremlin first. Mm -hmm. I see a Berserker Husk. I'm going to shoot it. Uh, so it's uh, stat five on defense. Mm -hmm. The power. 13. 12. This one's trigger is actually going to hurt my good old boy. Double neg says uh, one damage. Oh, the biogram also takes a damage. Uh, I'm going to shoot you again. I get a 7. I'm currently on a 12. Biogram done. I think I'm going to activate the um, the Berserker Husk. I'm going to charge the good old boy. Uh, I'm going to punch you in the face. Uh, I flip a 15 total. Mm hmm. I am going to. Let's go 16. Hard to wound as well, it's worth noting. Bosh, uh, that would be two damage. I get to push you four inches away. Let's push you north. I then get to push myself two inches. Um, and then I get to attack anything within one inch, as long as it's a different model. Nothing is in, within one inch. Um, I'm then going to use Swarm of Mites. I need a five. That is a one, cheating in this uh, Lilith. Uh, so I get the mask oh, for Either any... your hand is incredible or terrible. Enemy models damaged by this action must each pass a TN13 duel or gain a Parasite token. I'm going to take two damage, and then the Biogram is going to take a damage and die. Uh, I draw a card when it dies. Yep. The uh, One damage to good old boy. And on George and Olaf. We both get TN13. 13. 13 willpower duels. The willpower? Defense, defense duels. Georgie and Olaf. So I flip that to take me to the 10. I'm achieving this. Take me up to a 14. I could now creep along back out of the combat. So I need a five, one, two, effectively. The good old boy is going to go and have a quiet word with your berserker husk. Yeah, so if I charge to here, 13. Uh, eight. <laughs> Red Joker says five damage. Wow. Okay. I'm going to drink from my trusty flask, getting the four I needed, with a drunken stumble that's given me a one-inch push in any direction as well. A one, two, three healing flip heals me two. I'm going to spend the walk action as well to get back down to here. Uh, the archivist will create a 50 millimeter web marker anywhere within eight when it activates. Uh, I'm going to use Font of Knowledge uh, Nexus. Before I do so, I'll use Siphon Power. Yeah, so I'm going to Siphon Power that eyes and ears. Funk to give myself tomes. I'm going to cast uh, Font of Knowledge on Nexus. That is successful. I will use the tome to give. Um, Nexus tomes for the rest of the turn on anything that she wants. Um, I am going to note that you've just mugged a parasite riddled urchin for a book. Yes. Or as a Victorian gentleman would call it, a regular Tuesday night. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm thinking of focus. <laughs> Over to you. How am I supposed to work in these conditions? Ooh. Position perfectly. I'm going to send a Skeeter in to have a quiet word with the Night Silk Creeper. It's going to charge you. Uh, I'm going to use a Proboscis attack, which is a stat 4 on defense. Getting stupid, sexy, so shameless. 17. Uh, 8. 1 damage. Buzz, buzz, buzz. I'll take 1 damage. I'm going to attack you again. I have a Lady J this time. Yeah, yeah I've got an 8 out of the way at least. Alright, Skeeter out. Yep. I am going to activate Nexus. Uh, Nexus is going to cast Exoskeletal Connection via this um, Eyes and Ears targeting the Archivist. That successfully goes off. I will place a web marker in base contact with the Archivist and then place the Archivist in base contact with the Eyes and Ears. And then I'll do it again. Through the Spell Eater targeting mm -hmm. the Berserker Husk. So it needs a six. That's a five, so I'm going to discard this nine. So I will drop a marker into target into base contact with the Berserk Husk, and then put the Berserk Husk into base contact with the Spell Eater. Uh, I'm going to cast through the Berserk Husk, targeting the Archivist. Oh, that didn't feel good. So I'm going to do that. I should be drawing cards for each one of these I'm doing. Do you mind if I draw my cards now? By all means. He can go over there. Bop. I'm then going to cast Children of Malifaux through this 
uh, eyes and ears needing uh, I'm aiming for three I need an 11 there is a McMorning so I will place I'm going to place you there and remove that marker and then the other ones aren't quite as relevant so they can go there they can come out so yeah that is Nexus all done if it helps this one and this one were the ones that were here last turn Mm -hmm. They have not activated yet. I'm going to go with a Skeeter, the other Skeeter, mm -hmm. who is going to, first of all, attempt to um, disengage. You get a neg flip, okay. I believe. I'm on eight, you're on 13. So, I'm going to so take... two inches off. I'm going to so take I get two to inches move. off your buzz. So I'm going to move four inches to here, which I believe is outside of two of each of you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to charge Kavak. He is disguised. I'm not really worried about that. So I just buzz up to you and just settle on your hat. I'm going to go with Kavatika. Kavata will, will creep along to um, the Shambling Nest. Oh, just like that. Five inch move. Yeah, I'll focus. Angelis the time, which is just a world of two inch pushes. I have so many models. Oh, uh, Banjanista is going to trundle over here and bot here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try plucking the strings. I need a six with my bonus action. A pow. Uh, 10 13 willpower duel or gain distracted plus one. Nice. So yeah. I need a nine. That is not a nine, so I will gain distracted, which will just remove my focus. I'm going to activate this here, eyes and ears. Uh, when it activates, mm -hmm. it's going to heal a heal because of the presence of the good doctor, Meredith Stanley. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing again. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to try and eavesdrop on your good old boy. Oh, hello. <laughs> That'd be an 18 from me. That is a not eighteen from me, although not as far off as it could be. So I, so we must reveal a random card in your hand. So I'm going to choose the second one from the left. Uh, so reveal that one for me, please. And I would like you to discard it and draw a new one. That's all right for a free ability on a two soulstone model. <laughs> Georgie and Olaf. Yes, yeah, so they got a five inch move ending here. Then they're going to take a shot with their custom firearm. I'm going to shoot the archivist. Bang! Twelve. 13. Right, I'll cheat up to 19. Two damage down to one. All right, so I'm going to activate Dr. Meredith Stanley. Make a new Berserker Husk. Controversially, I'm going to discard the Black Joker and I'm going to push myself four inches. And then okay. I'm going to Alchemical Vial. I need a five. That is a five. So that is a movement 13 duel, please. Georgian Olaf, it's 13, isn't it? So I need a seven. Georgian Olaf, a fine. Banjanista. It's fine. And then I'm going to do it again. That is a seven, so yeah, that's more than sufficient. Yeah. Georgian Olaf, are going to take how much damage is it? It is two damage and poison one. Georgian Olaf are going to cheat in this 11. Bandanista is fine anyway. Uh, I'm going to go with Old Cranky. So he's going to walk down to stand next to Lenny. He is within two of that corpse, so he's going to pick it up and flip the top card of my deck. It is a tome, which means I gain a soul stone. Uh, then old Cranky is going to obey Lenny. You need a nine of masks. That's almost a nine of masks. There's a nine of rams. Good. Close. I'm going to activate Shambling Nest 2, which is that one, and basically move it six inches. Uh, right, I'm going to go with Gun Cry. I'm going to, again, just try to rip off the top. A nine of so masks. Stupid. I'm going to buy a two card cards. Back. Yeah. Oh, so close. I needed a seven because it's an opposed duel. Buy you two. Buy you bash. I'm going to have a little, little, little wander up here yeah, with uh, Lenny. I'm going to just kind of move two and a half inches over here. I think I'm going to go with the Spell Eater. I'm going to move the Spell Eater down to here. I think I'm going to shoot Lenny. I'll use my focus. 14. I'm on nine. I'm going to cheat this seven. Declared drain magic so that you discard. I then draw and discard a card. Ooh. I'll, Ooh. Take, I'll take a three damage. Yeah, all right. I'm going to stone that. I'll take one damage. I've discarded this four of tones as well. Cool, I then draw a card, and I may now discard a card. Can I see anything to do down to the last drop-on? Yep, so I'm going to target the Night Silk Creeper. Uh, I need a five. That's a six. Target and enemy models within two inches each take two damage. Sorry, one damage. Um, you then need to make a TN12 tough, um, defense duel or gain a parasite token. Okay, so I've put a token on um, the Skeeter. Yep. Lenny is going to throw a whack piglet at. So your spell eater is going to take a piggy to the face. <laughs> I'm on. I get a thirteen. Fourteen. Okay, I'll try it a second time. I'm on a less. I'm on a fifteen. I'm on a less good nine. A so nine fifteen is a straight flip. It's a straight flip. So I think I'm going to cheat in this six. A moderate damage of two. So down to one due to shielded. 
For the sake of it, I'm going to do a random bout of brilliance, getting crows. Nope, was a sneeze. I do one damage to each model within two. <laughs> Uh, Jordan Olaf and the Banjanista both get sneezed for a damage. Uh, I'm going to activate a Berserker Husk. So I've got to move four. And then I'm going to charge Jordan Olaf. No, I'll charge the Banjanista. That seems like a better use of punching. So I'm going to flip. 13. Yeah, I'm currently on a nine. Summertime. Summer, summer, Five inch. summertime. It's a summertime. He's going to amble down here to hit. He's going to try to summon some models. A Bayou Gremlin... Oh, I've done my math wrong. I can summon a Bayou Gremlin and a Spit Hog. I need a 13 of masks. Uh, I guess actually the Bio Bayou Groblin is going to go here. The Spit Hog is going to go here. I'm going to shoot at this Eyes and Ears. So I'm on a 13. I, I could shoot up. I am going to Bayou 2 card it instead. <laughs> yeah, fine. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get a 21. Puncture means I'm on a pos flip. I'm going to do three blast damage. I'm just going to blast off into nothing. So when the Eyes and Ears dies, um, both the Bio Gremlin and the good old boy would please need to make a Toughness 13 duel or gain a Parasite token. Bio Gremlin and then the good old boy. Team 13, yeah, so I'm fine. Smart as I look, I need a seven. I get it. Uh, until the end phase, after a friendly non-insignificant model with an Aura 6 is killed, I may draw a card. I'm going to activate the Shambling Nest. It's going to shamble. Buy you Gremlin 2. Just whack the shambling nest. Rock and roll, I got a 5. I mm -hmm. have a 16. I have one remaining eyes and ears to go. And I'm essentially just going to move twice. I might try an eavesdrop on your buyer gremlin. So I'm on a 16. Uh, here's a 13. Do you want you, me to discard it? You can absolutely discard it, please. And then you get to draw another one. Uh, the spit hog is going to attempt to lure Meredith Stanley up. Only the seven minimum. Stupid, yep. sexy Stupid. Seamus. So yeah, you're coming over here. The focus off of the archivist. And yep. give and the shambling the berserker hus distracted. Poppy Boy is going to move ten and then hop. Successful hop. I'm going to node this through the archivist, targeting the berserker husk. I'm going to ping the eyes and ears next to me for a point of damage to add a ram so I need a three. That is a two, which is incredibly disappointing. Do the same thing again. I'm going to ping the eyes and ears for a mm -hmm. ram so I can do an attack action. I'm, I'm going through the Berserker Husk, targeting Meredith Stanley. Um, so I need a three. That's just very disappointing. Actually, no, I will. I'm going to cheat in this Ramos. Um, yep. So I'm going to Rancid Transplant uh, George and Olaf. And the friendly model, okay. the friendly model within five is the Berserker Husk. I'm on a total of uh, eleven versus your defense. So I'm on twelve. So I'm going to cheat in this five that you gave me earlier, so mm -hmm. that you miss. Kavatika is going to score. I'm going to reveal and score hidden martyrs for the Berserker Husk that ran in and died like a Berserker. Um, as I've revealed it, the other model is Kavatika. You're going to have a Solorid score the strategy. Uh, yes, I am. Because he's the only one that can. So, I've drawn some cards. I've drawn some cards, and I think I'm going to stone. Initiative. I've flipped a two. I've flipped a two, which is actually a three. All right, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the Banjanista, gotcha. just to fix my dodgy positioning. Then I'm going to have a little jog, just to, just to neatly tuck in there. And I'm going to try to pluck the strings, leaving a six, getting it. Uh, that is a TN-13 willpower duel on the Night Silk Creeper or um, Get Distracted 1. So I need a 9. That's a 9. So the Berserker Husk is going to spend 1 AP to move to there. I am then going to use Swarm of Mites, the tactical action. Again, needing a 5. That is a 2. I'm going to cheat in this 6 of masks. So, this mm -hmm. model suffers 2 damage, one of which I'm going to give to the Skeeter, because it's friendly. Then I'll take a damage. Uh, George and Olaf, Lenny, Summer, the Banjanista and the Spithog will all take 1 damage. And, and then, then each of them needs to make a TN13 defense duel or gain a Parasite token. Georgie and Olaf is defense 7, so I need a 6. Uh, Banjanista is defense 6, so I need a 7. Uh, Lenny... Defense six, so I need a seven. Summer is defense six, so I need a seven. So I'm going to cheat in this ten. 
I might creep along at this stage. So that's a three. I need a five. I'm not going to... George and Olaf are going to go. They're going to, first of all, use who runs Gremlin Town because Summer cannot see them. Needing a five. Uh, stupid Sexy Seamus is going to give a bunch of me focuses. Tells the good old yep. boy the spit hog and the bunch of I'm going to disengage. Now this is where my distracted will come in. So I will neg flip a total of nine. Fourteen. I think you have successfully disengaged. Cool. I'm going to trot over here and say hello to the good doctor. And then I'm going to whack her with a staggering punch. I'm uh, fifteen. Nineteen. Two damage. I'm staggered. And then I get to do a custom firearm shot. I'm going to shoot the Spell Eater. I only have 14. I am on a 16. I'm going to activate the Spell Eater. Spell Eater is going to focus and then shoot George and Olaf, uh, which will become a straight flip, and there's a McMorning. Uh, I'm on 19. So have a stupid sexy Seamus. So this is the Drain Magic, so you're going to need to discard a card, and I'll draw a card. Double neg. Oh, fuck. Jesus Christ! All right, fine. Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm on one. Yeah, because of hard to kill. That's a lot of severes out of my hand. You need to discard a card. Cool. Okay. At which point you gain burning. I'm going to draw a card, and then I can discard a card. Spell Eater is then going to down the last drop on the Berserker Husk, needing a five. That is an eight, so that is sufficient. So the Berserker Husk going to take one damage. It's going to give that one damage to the Skeeter. Yeah, dropping a corpse. George and Olaf, the Spit Hog. The Banjanista, Lenny, and Summer are all going to take one damage. So that's George and Olaf dead, which means they're a bio gremlin. Which now means they're a bio gremlin. All of those models now need to make a toughness 12 duel or gain a parasite token. You do get to draw a card. Oh, from Skeeter? Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, all right, so going around then, we've got Lenny is fine. Summer is very fine. Banjanista is fine. Uh, Spit Hog is fine. Oh, uh, base to contact, I'm actually going to put the gremlin. Yeah, purely for the benefit of then I can get it bloody Dr. Stanley with Lenny. All right, I'm going to try to toss the Berserker Husk. Two so, times around, so yes. So you just take one damage. Uh, Lenny is going to charge you. I'm going to whack Meredith. I currently sit on a 17. Now I'm on 16. I am going to cheat up to 19 to give me a blast as well from a sweeping strike trigger. Three damage. And I blast onto uh, the Archivist for one, which will just knock off a shield. I'm going to stone, so I'll just take two. And finally, I'm going to random bout of brilliance. It's a black joker, nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> I'm going to activate the good doctor, who will heal one. Dr. Meredith is going to discard this card and use uh, doctor's orders to push herself her move, which is currently two. I can then... So I'm going to fling an alchemical vial there. I need a five to do so. That is a one. I think I'm going to cheat in this nine and also declare the infect okay. trigger. Summer Lenny, the bio gremlin, the spit royal host. Um, movement 13, Jewel, please. So yes. Summer's a seven. Doesn't get it. So he's going to take some damage. Two damage, two poison. poison. Two. So I'm going to stone... Yep. What a waste of a red joker. Right. Lenny. Lenny is going to take two damage. Bio gremlin is fine. Spit Hog is not fine. Banjanista, I'm going to cheat this in to make sure they're not fine. So you kill them. I'll draw a card, because a friendly model has died. I've thrown my, my Banjo down, you've killed me. There's a Bio Gremlin there now. There is, and you've moved him slightly out of the aura. Uh, the Bio Gremlin, because it's in base, to con base contact. Yeah, yeah. Throw him in next, Shockwave Marker. Yeah, I'm going to place it there. That is a 9, that goes off, so we're going to do the whole thing again. Summer, fine. Fine. Lenny. Fine. Bio Gremlin, fine. Piggy, extremely not fine. Mm. And then final Bio Gremlin also dies. So I'm going to activate the good old boy. I have a drink out of my crusty flask. Nearly a four. Cheating this in. Healing myself one. Uh, I'm going to charge and I'm going to punch the Berserker Husk. E17. With the Onslaught trigger. I'm on an 11. Two damage. The second attack from the Onslaught trigger. Uh, I'm on 11. 19. Please eat three damage. Yeah, he's dead. I'm then going to use my refurbished shotgun and I'm going to shoot this eyes and ears. Ooh. Bit of a whiff. I'm going to cheat in the six of masts uh, to put me on 13 to go 11. Damage on you is going to be two. Uh, I'm declaring the ricochet trigger and I'm going to do it on your archivist. Bang. The archivist is going to take two damage. Uh, which will be reduced to one and I'll drop a shielded. So I'm going to drop a web marker there. The archivist just drops one at the start of his activation. I'm going to inaudible wisp uh, Lenny. On an 11. 9. I'm going to cheat up to a 14. And I'm going to go to 17. 
Um, this will declare the hush trigger. Two damage. I am going to stone that. No damage. You must either discard a tome or I draw a card. Draw a card. You may draw a card. You now need to make a TN13 defense duel or gain a parasite token. Weirdly, I'm going to stone for a pulse flip here and whiff anyway. And then the archivist is going to go for a little jog. Old cranky. Mm-hmm. Trot four inches up, place himself there. I'm going to try to pick up that corpse marker. Flip a tome. Now I'm going to remove the weapon. Uh, the spell eater is going to down to the last drop. I need to hit a friendly target. Lenny is a friendly target because he has a parasite. And I need a five for this to go off. That is a seven. Mm -hmm. So Lenny and anyone within two inches of Lenny, yeah, will suffer one damage. So that's going to kill the piggy. All right. So Lenny's going to take a damage. I choose. Bye is taking damage. And then the good old boy will also take a point of damage. And then anyone that was damaged by that, including Lenny, needs to make a toughness 12 defense duel or gain a parasite uh, token. So Lenny is parasited, but he already is, so he takes two damage so instead, which is a stone. Yep. He's fine. Northmost biogamma. It's very fine. fine. Good old boy. Is parasited. I'm going to shoot Lenny with an elemental blast. I'm currently on a 15. Uh, I'm on 16. I will... I'll meet you on 16. Two damage. I'm going to stone. Two damage. Yep, fine. And then I'm going to shoot you again. I'm currently on 7. I'm on 11. I will see you on 11. I'm going to cheat in this to go up to 17. This one hit point gremlin is going to charge... Meredith. Well, it's got the Cabal trigger, which is plus one damage, and after resolving, end the model's activation. Meg flip? Yep. So I'll do you two damage, and my activation ends. And I will stone... Oh, there we go. No damage. This shambling nest is going to punch the bio gremlin that it's next to. So I'm going to get a... a Alright, fine, yeah. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to do it again. Very happy with 17. that. That's some good shambling nesting. So I'm going to go with Summer. And you're going to blow up that gremlin. I'm going to detonate the gremlin. Take one for the team. You need a six. It does two damage to each of your things within its yep. reach. So the Spell Eater will take a damage and lose shielded. And Meredith, I think, will just take the two damage at this point. So I'm just going to shoot you in the face. I'm stoning for a pulse for it. I'm on a 17. Uh, I'm on a 19 of rams, which is the puncture trigger. Yep. Two damage. I will stone. I will ignore your damage. I'm going to stone a second time and shoot you again. 13. The same. I'm going to flip in this uh, Lilith and go to 17. I'm finally going to do smart with my look. Doing a 7, getting it. Um, I draw a card when a non-insignificant model within range is killed. I'm going to activate the Night Silk Creeper, who at the start of its activation is going to place in base-to-base -base contact with a web marker within... I should be outside of your engagement range. I am. I'm then going to piss off to there, and I'm going to drop a scheme marker there. I'm then going to use my fast action to create a web within six inches past the activation. Okay, so the gremlin try is going to go. Five inch move. I'm going to try to obey the bio gremlin. Bio gremlin gets to do a thing, which is going to be just walloping the nest, I think. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> um, defense five, so I'm on a nine. Less than that. So Nexus is going to move to there. Use Omnipresent Influence to node through this shambling nest, and I'm going to attack the Bayou Gremlin. I'm on 20. Oh, I'm on 18. I'm going to declare the Terror for Bite trigger, which means I get to heal two. I'm going to give one of those heals to Meredith. Uh, you now need to discard a card or gain a Parasite token. Which would kill me. Which would kill you, so you die. I am going to attempt to summon a Eyes and Ears off the marker that's on summer using Lenny as a node point. I need a 13 minutes, so I need a six. That worked. Let's have another little jog. Skeeter's gonna go. Uh, Skeeter's gonna just double move over here and engage Nexus. Berserker Husk three. I'm gonna move. I'm then going to creep along towards Lenny. That is successful. I'm then going to take the Swarm of Mites action. So it's a TN5 requiring a 10. That is successful. I'm gonna take two damage, one of which I'm gonna give to you. Mm -hmm. And then you take one damage. Uh, Stone in that. Yep. Lenny lives. This bio gremlin is going to gonna charge Stanley. I'm on a 15. I'm not. And again. No. Bio gremlin done. This eyes and ears down the bottom. So essentially, she's just gonna go and stand next to Nexus as she's a portable suit. Uh, Hopper Boy is gonna hop. Yeah, he is. Gonna have himself a little jog. He's gonna slap down a scheme marker. 
Eyes and ears number three. I'm gonna charge your skeeter. That's a mighty five for me. Ten for me. Cool, I'll do it again. Fifteen. That's two damage. But eyes and ears over here, so he's gonna charge the Gremlin Crier. I'm on a ten. Nine. Two damage. Uh, I'm gonna punch you again. Fifteen. Nineteen. Cool, so I'm gonna eavesdrop. Fifteen. What's that? Left or right? Uh, left one, please. Always go left. No, you can keep the four of masks. That's fine. Shambling nest up at the top. Can move six inches. Kavatika, walk to there and then focus. Uh, and then I might creep along, targeting the archivist. That does not work. And then we can have ourselves some second nexus. Um, I'm going to target the good old boy uh, through the eyes and ears that's in front of him. I'm on a 16. I'm on a 7. Uh, walk into the cactus. Take a damage. Yep. I'm going to um, target Lenny using the um, the Berserker Husk. 15. Uh, Lenny is on 15 as well. In fact, just walk him into the cactus and kill him. So yeah, I'm going to draw a card when Lenny dies because he's a friendly model. End of turn. I'm going to score a covert operation when the Archivist drops a marker on to the strategy marker that he's on. Um, uh, I'm not going to score a cat at the top. I am going to score Hidden Martyrs, revealing um, Hoppy Boy and the Bantanista. The um, Salurid. The Salurid. Do feel like we can probably call it at this point, because I'm not scoring another point in this game. Turn four, I'm reasonably confident I can score both Covert and Sabotage. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so let's put a Covert and a Sabotage. I think you're going to score a Sabotage, if you want to score yourself one there. Um, if you've got Sabotage. Probably. I do, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't think you like, I don't. I don't think it's a case of you're going to not going to score another point. I don't think you're going to score another strat point. Well, I see. You've got enough models and enough obeys with the thing that if you put your mind to it, you could just delete my schemes before I get to score them. Yes. So I might score one more from a Cillarid surviving because it's going to run away into a corner after dropping its scheme markers. I think realistically, what would happen is I just need to put a model near. At the end of the turn, if you have two or more friendly scheme markers within two inches of the chosen tree, on the enemy train table, and not within three inches in line of sight of an enemy model. So all I need to do is stand the model next to one of those scheme markers. So yeah, you can prevent that entirely. I think I've got one more point on the board from hidden martyrs, maybe, and that's it. Yes, I don't think I'm killing so, the Salurid. That is a pretty thorough domination. Well done. So turn four, I'd score covert and sabotage. Turn four, you'd probably not. Then scorn five. I don't know if I can get down to here. Uh, uh, bearing in mind you, you've got two AP and then your master for an obey. Yeah, all right. No. Um, like, I don't you think, can get Meredith down there. I don't think you're killing Kavatica. And I don't think you're stopping yeah. Sabotage. So I think that's an 8-3. I think that is, yeah. Oof. Uh, how was Big Hat? Uh, Big Hat, it felt like I had this fairly intricate machine that someone had taken all the pizzas apart and put them on top of a big plate of wobbly jelly. <laughs> We're not entirely sure how to make this machine function. Yeah. Like, there was so much stuff where it's like, oh, I could be doing clever things, but I don't know what they are. Yeah. yeah. I'm intrigued. I'm not, I'm not put off by them. I'm intrigued. The, the raw stats are quite daunting. Yes. Uh, like... Going in on sevens, defense seven for quite a few models, defense six for others is like, they're very well started and it's a real toolbox for summoning. And I think I could have easily spent another 20 minutes each time I summoned agonizing over what to take. Mm. But I figured that would be unexciting for everyone involved. With reps, I might be able to do something with it. I don't know. But it was really interesting because I very purposefully didn't take in your face because I was convinced I had absolutely no chance of killing George and Olaf and Lenny. Mm. And turns out you really did. Like, it does feel like a radioactive wasteland. Because you've got... You're, you're, uh, you're saying for the game, but you, your crew has no three, three damage minimum beaters. No. But what you do have is a lot of pings. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, so uh, you don't need to be doing three damage you only need to land one or two hits and the thing falls over yeah yeah exactly so how are you feeling about your dibs pretty good pretty good I have to say um, in yeah. that it, it did what I was expecting it to um, I was sort of undenard in crew selection on Kavatica over a second Berserker Husk because obviously my Kavatica was the right choice I think it was because um, his creep along is one lower, need to go near five rather than a six, and he's moved five rather than move four. So he can really push to that far corner 
Yeah, and disguised as well. So it and just means disguised. that, like, Arcane Shielded I, too. Like, he became a really a, good model, both for doing that first strategy point and for doing hidden martyrs. Yes. Um, and at seven, it means I need a six cost model to be the other hidden martyr, and then I can just throw a berserker husk at you. And it, like, throwing a berserker husk at you is not out of character. Like it's not one of those things no. where you know sometimes when someone launches a model at you and you go, well that's their that's their yeah. martyr. I should keep that alive, kind of thing. And then just like the wave of eyes and ears, which are just useful models. <clears throat> Eavesdrop's really good. Yeah, eavesdrop. It is really really good because either you're going to cheat a card out of your hand to stop it, or you're going to, or I'm going to discard a card out of your hand if it goes through so either way you're losing a card from your hand is you know which is which is perfect or you've flipped a moderate so there's like there's no mm. there's no circumstance where one of those three things isn't a thing i want the unpack is ridiculously rube goldbergian as you saw yeah um which I is mean, fine. Big Cat was pretty similar in that where i was like i think i messed up the unpack and mm. that cost me a fair bit yeah both both of these crews were very like okay. The first bit of unpacking is going to be a bit shenanigan-y. Yeah, yeah. And w what's really interesting is that the archivist Nexus and Doctor Meredith all shift gears at the same time. Mm. Like the first two turns, it's I'm going to build web markers. I'm going to summon things in. I'm going to give you guaranteed suits. I'm going to summon. No, turn your summons into bigger things. And like you do that for the first two turns, and then they all three change gears into I've got ranged attacks. I'm going to throw out poison vials. I'm going to start hitting people through people. And I think that's really cool that the, you know the, the the hive mind changes focus at the same point. Mm. It's quite nice and fluffy in that regard. Um, poison was more of a factor than I was expecting it to be. So, Not a huge factor, but enough of one on top of all of the other. Or radioactive things. It was bigger than like it wasn't a huge part, but it was certainly bigger than I thought it was going to be. And I really mm. like the spell eaters. Um, if an opponent discards a card within six, then they gain my choice of either poison or burning. It's like cool. Well, then yes. you can have whichever one you don't have. Um, so if you've got poison, then you can have burning, and then you're taking two points of damage at the end of the turn. And then Meredith has an attack where if you have poison three, like what Summer does, um, then they gain parasite tokens. Cool. Um, any other thoughts on Big Hat before we round it up? I should have thoughts. I think my brain is too full of them. <laughs> then we will talk later. Um, talk me through very quickly, if you have the brain power. What were the schemes that you chose and why did you chose them? So I took um, Sabotage and Hidden Martyrs. Sabotage, I think, was a mistake. Really? Uh, Hidden Martyrs. The idea of Hidden Martyrs is I had a Cilarid that can't be targeted from a distance away. Mm, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, to survive, and um, it's pretty mobile, so it can stay away from things. Uh, Banjanista, it's a small, irritating, squishy model. I feel like most of my minions were going to die at some point. Yeah, that makes so perfect sense. So it didn't sense. feel bad putting it on that. Yeah, it makes sense to put it on him like, rather than like the Gremlin Cryer, because the Gremlin Cryer is a support piece that you keep at the back. It's also quite justified in like, the Banjanista wants to activate early so it can like move everyone up. Mm. And then the Banjanista has to like run forwards to be where the next round of you know, where everyone's gonna end up. Yeah. So playing it that way felt justified, but also like, hey, here's an exposed Banjanista if you want to blink it. Which mm. you didn't, but you might have done. Sabotage, I've chosen this terrain piece here, the um big blob of cactuses. Oh I thought, um, I thought you'd chosen like this one. I think that was a little bit too close. Oh, it might be within four, yeah. It wasn't within four, actually, we're fine. But, yeah. So, anyway, it was, um, like, I probably should have chosen that one to sabotage if I'd been sensible. Realistically, maybe set the trap would have been a better idea because you have so many models. Yeah, yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, obviously, I'd gone for sabotage on this and yeah. Hidden Martyrs. Actually, I Really should have gone for set the trap. That was yeah. foolish. I didn't. I mean, I, public demonstration. I don't have a lot of models under seven that aren't going to die, and yeah. you have a ranged master, so it's not like you were just going to be there anyway. Um, and I hate public demonstration in your face. I was convinced I wasn't going to be able to kill Lenny and Olaf and George, and the opposite was true. So that's worth bearing mm -hmm. in mind for the future. Although part of George and Olaf dying was his 
the fact that he got sneezed on by Lenny or whatever it was at the beginning of the game that made him take two damage? Oh, it was. Um, I just placed him slightly wrong, so yeah. he took two damage because um, when he said he rules Gremlin Town, yes. Summer went. I don't think you do, I mate. And you do. One about, yeah, which is and pleasing set, flavor. Set the, set the trap. I can do set the trap because with the Will of Cadmus upgrade, I can um, drop scheme markers through Will of Cadmus, ignoring insignificant. So I can drop it off any of the eyes and ears and shambling nests. It's the engagement ranges that um, I would feel happier doing that scheme with Nexus, th the, the the title, because she can obey models to do things, ignoring the engagement range of models with parasite tokens. Um, so yeah, then, like... you know, then you can just drop, drop um drop markers engaged. Mm. But putting shambling nests on strategy markers and then creeping along to them, like glorious, just worked. Did exactly what I wanted it to do. The Nexus one, I think, is a better choice for covert operation. Because yeah, because you always get the last word. Always, always. the last activation. Even if even if she dies, even if if um, Nexus dies, I still get two obeys mm. at the end of the turn. Uh, oh, you get one obey at that point because it oh, goes yeah, on to yes, another model. Yes, you're absolutely right. You get slow. Right. Um, I still get an opportunity to move you away from a strategy marker. Same for guard the stage. Or, or move one of yours into me to engage me, which means that you're not even having to an opposed duel. Yeah, yeah, simple duel. You just have to hit the target number. That's a good point. Um, same with guard the stash. I think like Ooh. Will of Cadmus is super strong in um, guard the stash. Carve well, again. You can just you can. Hey, here's another interaction. Here's mm -hmm. another interact. And again, with all the as long as your shambling nests or parasite markers are out, you can always creep along to the carve marker. Mm. Cool. I think that's it, Rich. Thank you very much for the game. I think that's my first victory against you in a bit of a while, and certainly the first one on stream. So that's nice. Handy viewers, such as you are, thank you very much for joining us. And as ever, I need a better outro.